Okay, so welcome um, to the last part of uh, this lecture series. So um, today I want um, to talk about the, um, the results that, um, that uh, I obtained, the upper bound result and the multiplicity one result, and also um, about Jordi's um, ideas and results, the count example, and something about the Elias and Williamson proof. Um, the problem is that it's, um, it, it parts, it's quite technical, but I hope I can give you an idea of uh, what is going into, into the proofs, where the uh, hard parts are. So, um, so let me motivate um, the approach. For the um, motivation, I should give you now the definition of a braden McPherson sheaf, um, and that is as follows. So take, take a moment. So um, um, let's stick to the finite um, situation of finite Weil group. The FN situation is not much different. It's just a little more in involved. Um, so here we start with a, um, with a root system. And um, this defines, um, defines a Weil group. Um, it defines the, uh, um, the character lattice and the co-character lattice. So, or better, maybe say weight lattice better. Weight lattice and uh, co-weight lattice. So uh, what is that? The co-weight lattice, um, so for example, the co-weight lattice is the, um, um, so following, so the root system sits inside a, a Euclidean, an R a vector space. And um, so the co-weight uh, lattice is defined by all elements in the, in the dual of this space, such that if you evaluate at, um, at the root, uh, you get something integral. So for all alpha and R, um, and the weight lattice, you do the same with the co-roots. Uh, okay. So this defines the, uh, the moment graph G, the moment graph. Um, it is the, the following. So the vertices are given by the Weil group and the edges by the reflections. I mean, this is the set of X, um, Tx, and they are labeled by alpha T. So where X is an arbitrary element in the Weil group, and um, alpha t, well, let's, let's wrote it, write it like this. You have a root alpha and the corresponding reflection as alpha. Um, so alpha as in R. Um, say R plus uh, to make this kind of uh, unique. So R plus is, an, is a choice of positive roots. Um, this is the, um, the moment graph that um, is uh, important. Um, so far, it is not, um, not ordered, but we can uh, use um, the Brüha order on the set of vertices, which is the Y group. So we have an ordered, um, ordered uh, moment graph. So um, I defined what a, a sheaf on such a, um, a graph is. So I mean, to, to define a sheaf, we have now um, we have to choose a field, k. Okay, so that's a, um, a field or um, ground field for all the theories we were discussing, and um, then we look at the symmetric algebra over the uh, corresponding um, vector space. So let us no, let's take x. One has to be here, one has to be a little careful um, in the affine situation. It really depends um, whether you label the, uh, the affine situation really makes a difference if whether you label the uh, edges by roots or by co-roots because the, uh, um, the affine Weil groups are not isomorphic. So, W, the semi-direct product of W and the root lattice is not isomorphic in general to the uh, semi-direct product of the Weil group and the co-root lattice. So these are non-isomorphic um, Weil groups. And um, so that one has to be careful here. 
um, the Weyl group is isomorphic to the Weyl group of the dual root system. So um, we don't have to be, um, we, could, we could use co roots here. Um, okay. So, and then we have the sheaf theory. And um, so um, let's, um, let me um, define what uh, sections and local sections are. So if F is a sheaf on, um, on, on G, so just to remind you, a sheaf on, on G consists of the following datum. For each vertex, you have to give an S module. For each edge, you have to give an S module. But this uh, um, S module should be annihilated by this alpha. And then you have to give for each edge um, a morphism from the one edge, from the module on the one edge to the module on the, um, on, sorry. For each edge, you give them um, two homomorphisms from the modules uh, on, the, on the vertices to the module on the edge. So this row XE that I defined. So, um, so if I now is a subset of uh, the set of vertices, in our case, the uh, Weyl group, you define um, gamma i f to be the following. So it's a set of elements z w sitting in the uh, direct sum of the stalks of this sheaf f corresponding to elements in, in i such that rho x e z x equals Rho y e z y for all ed for x and y so for all edges e connecting x and y um, in in the subgraph i. So um, these are the um, the sections um, for any subset of um, of the vertices, and um, so. For the sheaf theory, we need um, we need a notion of uh, open subsets. So uh, we define J in W. Uh, we define this to be open if it satisfies um, the following property. So if if it has the con uh, the following condition. So if we have X in uh, J and Y in W, subject to the condition that uh, let me think, Y is uh, smaller or equal to X then um, y is also in j. So this means um, and a subset is open if it's closed under the relation. So with any element, every element that is smaller is also contained in j. Um, I guess that's, um, that's, that's kind of contradicting the usual. Um, let, me, let me change this. Let me change this to bigger um, bigger or equal that's uh, sorry sorry about that that's uh, closer to to the usual convention of course it doesn't it doesn't really matter um, uh, yeah okay so so now the um, the, um, um, the the motivation to construct um, Braden McPherson sheaves is um, the uh, the problem of extending local sections so this means uh, the question uh, the problem is uh, the following um, is is the restriction map from global sections of a sheaf F to say uh, sections over an, um, an open subset uh, J is this objective? Is the restriction map subjective for all open J? That is the uh, the um, um, the motivating question. So the restriction map is um, is um, kind of the obvious map. I mean, if you if you have a um, if you define the set over I, um, and I prime is a smaller subset, then you can project onto the components in I prime and get the section in I prime. 
but it's not clear that you get all sections over I prime because uh, you construct the sections over I prime using fewer, uh, of course, fewer uh, restrictions and then uh, extending um, might not be possible. So um, let me give you, to give you an idea of uh, how to calculate these extensions, let me give you an example. So uh, if, um, if we um, are in case A2, um, the, uh, um, the general, uh, so the moment graph looks, looks as follows. So it's the, con con um, the, the Weyl group is as uh, three symmetric um, group of rank uh, two. And um, so with uh, two simple um, reflections, um, and the moment graph looks as, uh, as follows. So it has these, um, these um, edges, and um, maybe we choose some, some color. And the labels are, for example, I mean the one simple root alpha, um, this other simple root beta, and then the third root, which is not simple, is the root alpha plus beta. So these are the labels of, uh, of this graph. And now um, let's define, um, define the structure sheaf S, uh, Z. We can define it for, um, for any moment graph. This is the structure sheaf. It has the property that on each, um, Mm. So normally I, I write these, these as a, a, sup, a superscript, not as an, um, as an index, but OK. So the, the uh, objects that we, uh, that we put on, on the vertices are just um, the um, symmetric algebra S um, as a free module of rank 1. On set E, on each edge, we have S modulo, the corresponding uh, label and row x e are the quotient maps. So these are the, the canonical quotients. So um, in this case, the um, the structure sheaf uh, satisfies this assumption, and this is far from obvious. Um, for example, I mean, let let us calculate an example so that that you can see what. Um, could go wrong. I mean, it doesn't go wrong in this case. Um, but um, so here we have the identity. Here we have, um, we, we have the two simple reflections, S and T, ST and TS. And here we have the longest element in the Weyl group, STS or TST. And now um, an open um, subset is, uh, is a subset in this graph that is kind of closed um, from below. So uh, with every um, element, every element that is uh, bigger in a Brewer order should also be contained in the set. And bigger means uh, it's uh, written f further, further down. So one open subset, the smallest one, apart from the empty subset, is the subset containing only STS. And um, what is a section on this, uh, on this vertex is just an element in S. Um, let us play around with that. Let's say, um, so what is S? This is the symmetric algebra over, over this, um, this uh, vector field. So it contains the roots. So let us take uh, as a choice for an element in S something um, uh, linear, so of, um, of homogeneous degree 2 in our usual um, convention. Let's say we take alpha. And then here we are supposed um, to, I mean, to extend the section. So now we want to extend this section, this local section, to this point. So we have to find here an element in S in the corresponding um, stalk that is equivalent to alpha um, modulo beta. We have some choices. Let's say we have, we take alpha plus two beta. And here we would have uh, to find something that is equivalent to alpha modulo alpha. Well, let's take zero. So that would be uh, now a section on this open subset containing ST, STS, and TS. And now we okay, want to extend it to this vertex, T. So here we have to find something correspond. I mean, the um, the relation corresponding to this to um, this edge says that what we have to put here, what we uh, will put here, should be equivalent to alpha plus two beta modulo alpha. 
but it should also be equivalent to, um, to zero modulo alpha plus beta. Uh, so I guess there's a unique um, element of degree two, two alpha plus two beta, if I'm not mis, uh, mistaken. This is equivalent to this modulo alpha and to zero modulo alpha plus beta. And similarly here, um, so we have to find something which is equivalent to zero modulo beta and to equivalent to this one modulo alpha plus beta. And I think that should be beta, right? Um, of course, we could add here in a degree two, uh, four element. We could, for example, the product of these two labels can always be added. But we stay in a homogeneous um, situation. And then these two elements are uniquely determined already. And now it gets more difficult on this upper uh, vertex because this has to satisfy three relations. So it should be um, equivalent to beta modulo alpha and to, to two alpha plus two beta modulo <laughs> beta. Um, so I guess two alpha plus beta would do the trick, right? Um, yeah. Two alpha plus beta would do the trick. Modulo alpha, that's okay, and modulo beta, this is also okay. And uh, this is already uniquely determined, and <laughs> but it still satisfies uh, this relation without even, so it, it has to. So um, but even though it's uniquely determined. You see these moment graphs coming from, from a Bruja, from a root system, from this Bruja, they have some very interesting property. Um, so suppose um, the label here was alpha plus two beta, right? Just slightly change the moment graph and put alpha plus two, two beta as a label here. So it's a moment graph that doesn't come from a root system and so then it would have the property that there's a section that you cannot extend because this was already determined by just these two relations. So these are very special graphs coming from the root system and um, you can prove that, um, that the structure sheaf always satisfies this property on these graphs. But if you look at the subgraph, if you look at the subgraph and you do a, um, so if you delete everything which is below there and you start this um, procedure, then it might, you might run into problems. And this is the case if and only if the corresponding Schubert variety is not rationally smooth. So, um, because what you're calculating here is the intersection cohomology of the corresponding Schubert variety. And um, what you can also imagine is that sometimes, I mean, not in this situation, not for the structure sheaf, but sometimes it, uh, everything depends on the arithmetic of your field. So it might be that um, you can, so we never, so we never had to divide by, by any um, integer here. But it might very well be that at one point we have to add a third of alpha or so. Um, Maybe I, can, ah, maybe I can give you an example of this in the affine situation. Um, so that shows um, that we have to divide um, by, by something. Um, uh, okay, let me, let me give you this, uh, this example. And we, as soon as we have to divide by something, we get a bad primes. I mean, we get exceptionally um, primes and exceptional primes and torsion primes. So in the affine SL2 situation, you uh, might end up with, uh, so hopefully I, I can, um, uh, I get it right. So you, you end up with uh, graphs that have uh, these kind of very simple subgraphs that are labeled by uh, as follows. So this is affine SL2, affine um, A1, um, affine A1. Um, so there you have, um, you also have imaginary uh, I mean, okay, no, I mean, they don't have imaginary root, but you have affine roots. Um, so here, um, this could be labeled by alpha. And this is uh, typically labeled by alpha minus delta, where delta is the imaginary root in the Katz-Moody algebra. It's just an uh, independent element. I mean, you can think of this as alpha and delta being independent elements in a, in a vector space. 
And this here is depending on how far you go into the uh, affine Grassmannian. This is an affine Grassmannian picture. Uh, you have something like alpha plus n delta. So that would be a typical moment graph, a very small moment graph appearing in affine situations. Let's do this. Uh, oh, I hope I can solve this. Um, let's do this um, in, on, on this, um, this graph. We start, we start with, a, this would be the, the lowest vertex. And we start with, uh, say, oh, we, we choose alpha here again. And then let's say, to make life simple, we choose 0 here. Uh, I hope I, I get what I, what I promised. So now we have to have um, here a multiple of alpha minus, minus delta, right? It should be equivalent to 0 modulo alpha minus delta. So let's, um, let's write uh, xi alpha minus um, delta. So what is xi? It, um, it is um, defined in set. Maybe um, if you have the solution, just tell me. But uh, I mean, we have to set. Um, 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 so it, there should be an equation alpha plus uh, some eta alpha plus n delta should equal xi alpha minus delta, right? So and that should, um, so uh, how, so what, we, what do we get? Alpha and uh, delta are linear independent. That means 1 plus eta is the coefficient in front of alpha should be xi. 1 plus eta should be uh, xi. And uh, n eta, n eta should be minus 1. Uh, OK, eta, OK, no, not minus 1, minus xi. Um, OK, let's um, add these two. Um, then we have 1 plus n plus 1 eta equal to 0. Or eta is OK, yeah, it's minus 1 over 1 plus n. Uh, OK, and xi? Xi is then n over 1 plus n. So n over 1 plus n. So I hope I didn't make, make a mistake. So is that equivalent to alpha plus, to alpha modulo? Um, um, did I make a mistake? Is that, is that correct? So let's see. I mean, if, if we d form the difference, um, alpha minus n over 1 plus n uh, alpha minus delta. Uh, um, so we get uh, 1 plus n, 1 plus n um, alpha minus n alpha plus n delta over 1 plus n. So we can ignore 1 plus n. And this is alpha plus n delta, right? This is alpha plus n delta. I think I got it right. OK, OK, well, anyways, I, I don't want to waste uh, more time here. The important um, observation now is that uh, you see, uh, even so, um, even so this, this moment graph is very simple. And it is smooth in uh, characteristic 0. Uh, we can always extend these local sections below there. Uh, we have to divide by something. And already here, it gets quite of inv involved, right? You get very interesting rational numbers here. And you see every prime dividing n, 1 plus n is bad. So um, if, if you're working over a field uh, of characteristic dividing 1 plus n, then you cannot extend this very simple section. OK. Uh, good. So it's, um, it is really um, a very intric uh, intricate uh, phenomenon. Oh, by the way, this uh, corresponds to the fact. So this is um, the affine Grassmannian of type SL2. Um, so this is not smooth, but it's rationally smooth. That means the um, intersection cohomology um, is the constant sheaf. Um, it's rationally smooth, up to a shift, of course. It's rationally smooth, but it's not smooth, and it's not p-smooth. That means uh, intersection cohomology with coefficients in fp is not of rank 1. It's not the, uh, the constant sheaf.
Okay. Ah, um, right. So, um, yeah, how you see also the GK, I think you see also the GKM condition appearing here because if P, if, if the prime P divides 1 plus N, then these two labels become linearly, uh, I mean, they are the same, right? Modulo, uh, modulo any P dividing 1 plus N, these are the same elements. So you see something, uh, the, 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 the moment graph kind of degenerates in characteristic P, already the graph, and this is uh, kind of what happens here in this uh, section business. Uh, so, so the structure sheaf you see that here in in, in bad characteristic might not um, might not um, be um, be flabby. So this if it this subjectivity uh, property holds, we call the uh, sheaf flabby. Um, so, but in mathematics we can always replace objects by nicer objects that have a certain, the, the one property we want, right? So maybe we don't understand these uh, objects so very well, but at least they, <laughs> very often they exist. And the brain McPherson sheaf is constructed in such a way that you can construct, then you, that you can extend every local section. It makes sure it, um, that you can do it, and it is, in, a, in some sense, the smallest um, free sheaf that has this property. So it's defined as follows. So um, the BMP sheaf on the moment graph G um, um, for for um, for uh, some some vertex uh, W in W. So for each W and W, define this uh, Braden McPherson sheaf. Um, it is constructed as follows. So in, uh, it is constructed algorithmically. Alg um, alg so we have the following algorithm. So first, you said um, BW, this should be the uh, braden McPherson sheaf. BW um, X um, should be um, 0 unless X is smaller or equal to W. OK, that settles already a lot of uh, stocks. Um, then um, if um, BW X is constructed, And E is an edge connecting X and Y, but um, um, X is, is, is bigger than Y. So each, uh, if, if there is an edge between two elements in the Y group, of course uh, they uh, um, differ by a reflection, so they are comparable in the Brüher order. And suppose uh, we have an edge um, kind of originating at, at X, X is bigger and BWX is constructed, then set um, B W E, the, um, the object on this um, on this um, on this edge should be B W X. So if the label here say is alpha um, divided by B alpha times B W X. So it's the um, uh, if it's this quotient of the object you sit you you, you place on the vertex um, which is bigger. Of the, it's the bigger one of the two uh, on this on this edge, and you um, we can already define rho x e from b w to b w e is the canonical quotient. Okay, this uh, will hold for for an arbitrary edge. Once we have constructed something on the bigger side, we know what is on the edge. So, um, okay. Yeah? Pardon me? Stock? Yeah. Right. So I assume. So uh, so, so we are, I, I'm not finished with the algorithm yet. But we assume that somewhere in the algorithm, we uh, constructed a stock like the ones we did here, and um, then we said um, 
we, we, we construct every module on each edge that kind of uh, comes from X, where X is the smaller one of the two uh, uh, vertices, then we set this, we put this module on the edge, and we have this row map. What we still have to define is all the other um, stocks and the row maps in the other direction. Right. Ah, uh, right. The same as it worked out to be the same as the model you attached to each vertex. So, um, no, this is a slightly different. Um, so, you can place this uh, theory inside uh, classical sheaf theory, uh, but not using this topology. So, uh, in the paper of Braden McPherson, there is um, there is. Um, um, there's a construction. It goes as follows. So look at the set of uh, sorry. <laughs> the set of vertices and edges. That is the under underlying topological space. And now put this, uh, the following topology on this space. If you have a vertex in a set, so it's an o a set is open if it contains with any vertex all the originating edges. So this has nothing to do with a partial order. But in this way, you get um, um, a topological space. And this uh, a, a sheaf on a moment graph is nothing else than a coherent module for the structure for a certain algebra defined on this um, al um, sheaf of rings defined on this space. But in this theory, it's not really helpful, in my opinion, to think of that, because this partial order is completely invisible. Uh, but nonetheless, yeah. whatever module I'm attaching, Right, yeah, yeah, so it's called the stalk of the sheaf, and it's uh, once you, yeah, once you use this other definition, this other viewpoint on this uh, theory, it is the stalk of, yeah, I mean, it is in some sense, it's a, it's a stalk of a real sheaf on a topological space. Say it again. Yeah, we'll come to that. Yes, we'll come to that. We'll come to that in a, in a moment. Um, let me finish the uh, algorithmic um, construction. So uh, what do we have to do um, to extend local sections? So um, um, suppose BWX is constructed for all x strictly bigger than, than y, OK? So now we want to uh, construct BWY. Then once this is constructed, you can already um, form the global sections on, um, on this, on this um, sorry, on x, x strictly bigger than, than y of BW. I mean, we haven't yet defined this BW, but these sections can already be constructed because um, um, we have we have all the stocks and um, so and all the row maps and all the row maps so then we can already form this um, this uh, these sections and uh, this is now um, a space of sections um, that lives on all stocks um, that are bigger than y and we want to extend such a, such a section to y so what do we have to do? We have to look um, what, um, so this can be constructed. Um, and then from here, there is a, there's a row map. Let's call it row delta y to the direct sum over all edges um, connecting some x to, to our y, where x is bigger than y, b, w, E. This can already, uh, these row maps can already um, be, be constructed. And by this I mean, um, I mean the following. So this sits inside the direct sum of all x bigger or equal to, to y bwx. And here's the, here's the direct sum of, of row maps. Um, then um, we define b 
BW delta Y SD, uh, sorry, um, uh, delta, maybe this, yeah, delta Y. This should be the image of this rho delta, delta Y. This should be the image, so it sits inside this direct sum of BWE. And now, the final step in a braden macpherson uh, algorithm is uh, the following. Set BWY to BW delta Y. So this defines the space as a projective cover. in the category of graded S modules. And this, since this sits inside um, a direct sum of um, modules on the edges E, the components of this, these maps also define defines the row, the row uh, maps. Um, so this is a little technical. This, that might have been a little uh, fast. But uh, if you think about this for, for a while, you see that this is a reasonable, um, reasonable um, definition uh, for the following um, for the following reason. Um, delta y. This is just a definition of this uh, row map. So, so you see these are local sections, and we want to extend it to the um, vertex y. Um, that means um, so the the image here is kind of the local the local sections that come into these, these edges that end at y that we have to solve, you know, where we have to solve uh, relations. So by taking a protective cover of these um, extension problems, we, you know, by, by just, we, we just construct magical solutions. Ah. Um, yeah, I, I, here. So, um, so um, ah, oh, right, I forgot that. Thank you. So, right, right. And um, B, W, W is S. Okay, thank you. Right, I forgot that. Yeah, yeah. So the last, you can, yeah, that um, since, yeah, so um, that, is, that is a convention. Um, so I always uh, start at, um, so I, I, I do that in such a way that the support of BW is on the vertic vertices that are smaller or equal to W. Kind of, um, the open the open cell in the Schubert variety corresponding to W is the is C W, and then you know the singularities happen at smaller cells, and the the most singular stratum in the Schubert variety is the one corresponding to E. That is where we have the potential the uh, potentially the highest uh, the highest rank. Okay. Um, so this is um, this is the algorithm, and uh, now. Um, so the one problem that uh, yeah to B X You mean the brain McPherson sheaves uh, uh, originating at X? Uh, not really, but we will we will um, use um, kind of. Bx upper x is the same as Bx upper w. I ah, no, 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 no. That's no, no, no. So you cannot um, um, switch. There's no duality like that um, in in brain McPherson sheaves. So the uh, the principal problem now, uh, and this would I mean. Solving this problem um, solves Kashtan Lustig, all Kashtan Lustig type and Lustig conjectures. I calculate the graded rank 
of B um, W upper X for all W and X in the Y group. So this rank um, gives you gives you everything. I mean, gives you the uh, dimension of stocks of parity sheaves. It gives you um, um, character formulas in positive characteristic. With there's a slight problem that we hope to solve soon. But anyway, this is really what one has to understand. Um, the conjecture is um, so the hope. The hope that um, is um, is that the graded rank of this is uh, the the um, the lustig polynomial. This is the corresponding kastan lustig polynomial. So when this is true, if the characteristic of k is zero. So, um, well, um, hope by hope, I mean, um, um, yeah, what should I say? Um, no, um, no, no, I mean, um, this is not true for uh, for small primes. The uh, hope is to, uh, yeah, okay. Um, no hope is, is maybe um, the good the the the, the great situation. <laughs> so let's so the, is when this is the case. So I shouldn't. So the the problem actually is to determine all primes for which that is true. So maybe let um, so um, specifically determine all primes. All characteristics with with this um, with this property. Yeah, I mean, um, I believe if you can do it for the Y group, then you can extend it for the FN Y group. So this is a toy model, oh, so and. That yes, is exactly that would solve the uh, lustig. Um, so in this situation, uh, it really, really, really gives you characters of um, of. Um, I, I mean, okay, I, I'm sorry. Um, it really gives you some um, some Jordan Hölder multiplicities. <laughs> this I should say. It really gives you some Jordan Hölder multiplicities. Not yet a character of a simple. Pardon me. No. Even when x equals w. Oh, when x equals w, the rank is one. That is, um, that is by definition. You remember um, b w w is s. Uh, okay. so that is uh, right, right. Then, then it's it's always true, and you can prove a lot about this uh, created rank. Um, so. Um, yeah, well, this is very tempting. Um, so we know um, a lot about this um, this graded rank. For example, it is enough. So in order to prove this, In order to prove this statement in characteristic P, it is enough um, to show the following, uh, namely that um, B W X is generated as graded S module in in degrees str 
strictly smaller than length of w plus length of x. So and that, of course, for x are not equal to, to w. Um, so this would be enough. That would also, um, it would also, uh, so, so if you look at this problem, so BWY, so each of these dogs is just a protective cover of a certain S module inside this uh, torsion S module. Um, and unfortunately, this is not free. I mean, it sits inside a torsion submodule, it cannot be free. Um, but it would be enough to show that this module is generated in degrees smaller than length of w plus length of y in this case. That it generates because what you, what you do to find, to construct a projective cover is you, uh, you construct it degree by degree. You, lo you look at the lowest degree. Um, you look at the number of uh, necessary generators. And for each of these generators, you have to have a, 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 co a copy of a free, um, of a rank one, a copy of S sitting here for each of the generators in lowest degree. And then you, uh, you divide out the submodule that's already generated. You form the quotient. And then you look at the next higher rank and ask, uh, so what is the uh, number of generators in this rank? And then you add another copy, because you have to, you have to get this generator too with an, with an um, free S module of rank 1. And so you so, um, so how to construct this? OK. Uh, yeah. So it's important that this is inside um, it, that is inside a um, um, graded um, situation. So we have so we constructed this um, module um, B W delta Y. Right. So um, suppose you have constructed this. Um, that is the the, the one step in this uh, inductive uh, procedure. And then um, so first um, um, so so each each homogeneous degree is just a vector space. Um, so look at look at lowest degree, non-zero. I mean, uh, lowest uh, degree, um, and then um, choose let's say the degree um, degree the lowest degree is n. I mean, if you start start the lowest degree is zero of this. Um, choose uh, dim, dim k b w delta y n um, generators. And this yields a map from s um, to the n to b w delta y n. Uh, no, n, not n. I mean to b w delta y. And then, you know, it's, it extends. So you uh, check. So if it's surjective, you are done. And if not, repeat with the quotient, right? Um, BW, with BW um, delta Y modulo the image. Ah, sorry, right. Um, right. Uh, sorry, I made a mistake. So um, this is this is uh, the appropriate degree, and the number of um, d equal is sorry. Thank you. Yeah, that is what I meant. And then you look at the quotient, and um, then you you repeat, and what you construct is the uh, minimal free uh, module. Pardon me? Some Taking some? Taking some? Ah, yeah, you, you, you um, well, it, you don't, you don't, you only need one step. You only need one step for this. Um, what you get in the end um, is uh, BWY. So, and this, um, the principal problem would be um, would be equivalent to showing that this um, you have to do only up to the degree length of w plus length of y minus one, and then you already have 
already you have constructed everything. That would be equivalent. So, uh, yeah? But this construction is independent of any of that. This will always, I mean, yeah. this will always Yeah, yeah. This will always give you, on arbitrary moment graphs, will construct you the braid McPherson sheaf. No restrictions on anything. It all works for uh, every, um, in every so situation. Right, right, right. So um, let me just quickly say why, uh, why this is um, equivalent to, uh, to uh, this Cachalusic polynomial thing. And the point is that using um, a circle bimodule approach but adapted to Braden McPherson sheaves, we'll maybe talk later about that too, you can show that BW are in a certain sense self-dual objects. That means what you what you construct here. If you if you take these polynomials and um, let x vary and form the corresponding element in the Hecker algebra, you can show you get a self-dual element. So it's already very close to the Cassian-Lustig self-dual element. But the Cassian-Lustig self-dual element um, says that um, the the coefficients, the Cassian-Lustig polynomials, should live in degree smaller than length of w plus length of x, strictly smaller. And uh, so that is directly uh, translated into this. And, um, and this is also the condition, as I said yesterday, that comes, that is in the definition of an intersection cohomology sheaf. So once you know that BW um, is the global intersection cohomology of a variety, then you, you uh, get this as a, as a gift. So, <laughs> because this is, once you can connect this to intersection cohomology of a variety, you are done. But we can only co uh, connect it to parity sheaves on the variety, not to intersection cohomology. Okay. Um, maybe it's a good time for. Yeah. Is there? Okay. No. Wonderful. I can. I can go on and. Uh, okay. Okay. Let me just go on. So um, this is um, so. If you want to, if you want to read about um, this, um, uh, you can check my paper. Uh, uh, no, um, no. This is also written uh, down in the upper bound paper, an upper bound for the exceptional primes in Lussac's conjecture. So um, that appeared in Duke. In my paper in Duke. Um, there, um, these uh, things are written down. And also the, the, um, the stuff that, I, um, that I'm telling you now. So um, there's another. Um, so from the construction, you cannot read off that the um, braid McPherson sheaf is self-dual. And it's not even clear what it, what it means. but. Uh, um, let me just uh, write down a, a fact that you can prove in any case associated to, um, to a root system. That is the following. So we define BW lower x in brackets. We define this as the kernel of B w x to b w delta x. So this is the module uh, for which this is a protective cover map. And now we take the kernel. So if you wanted to find a resolution, you would have to find a protective cover of this. But now it turns out, so this is a fact, um, and this is an absolutely non-trivial um, fact, that um, this space is, is a free S module as well. Uh, the kernel already is free. And moreover, and it is isomorphic 
um, so let's see, it's the dual of, of this, uh, so it's isomorphic to the dual, um, graded dual S module, um, so that is, D is um, homomorphisms in S mod Z from something to, to S, I mean, yeah, gr graded homomorphisms. So direct sum of all of all shifts. So this is the duality functor on um, graded S modules. Uh, so it yields a graded S module as, um, again, and then you have here a shift. Um, um, I think it's length of W plus length of X. Uh, so. Uh, I'm not not completely sure. Let's, nah, no. Ooh. Length of W minus length of X. Minus length of X. That looks... So I think it's this correct. Or maybe, maybe times two. Uh, shall, I, shall I look that up or is, you see this, this problem, this problem that I wrote down here will now have a reformulation where you might say, oh, come on, that's obvious. Where, you know, where I, when I saw that, I thought, okay, well, that shouldn't be, t be difficult to prove. Um, and it's the following. So it's kind of, um, so, uh, <laughs> I mean, I know I have I have many um, colleagues who tried who worked with that and each of them, including me, had this one moment where we thought, okay, we have proven everything um, because there's a reformulation which makes perfect sense, and it's the following. So look at this situation here. Um, so you have B W. Uh, yeah, and of course, what I wanted to say, I mean, we thought we had proven it, but then it was completely wrong. <laughs> and um, look at this situation. We have a free submodule, a, a, a submodule in a free module that is also free. And um, it's, it's, in, um, it's, it's in the dual of, its, of the bigger module. And um, now um, choose, um, so, um, let's see, uh, okay, so uh, this is a, an algebra homomorphism, a uh, homomorphism of graded algebra um, that sends x or x tensor k to multiples of, the, of, of t by just evaluating um, the, the, um, the uh, weight here at a co uh, generic co-weight. So generic would mean that um, for example, in, in Jordi's and Ben Elias' um, um, paper, it would mean that lambda evaluated at each positive, no, sorry, this evaluated at each positive root should be a positive number.